Hi, this is Scott. It's December 11th, 2015, and we're going to do a couple videos on this 5-ton air-cooled chiller, uh, which is set up in a remote condenser fashion. And this is set up and tested and configured uh, to be able to go to a brewery. And what we've done, which is pretty rare, but we like testing our chillers, is we went ahead and made the connections uh, between the air-cooled condenser uh, right up into uh, well, uh, to the 5-ton uh, chiller portion. Um, of the chiller. Uh, this is a 208 230 volt unit made by Temperature Corporation. Um, it's never been used, zero hours on the unit. Uh, so we're the first ones to, to get it going, running, running, testing it here. It's a 208 uh, three phase unit. Um, they do specify for the uh, uh, for the combination, the chiller and the condenser uh, 25 amp circuit. Um, so what we have is above in here our uh, 5 horsepower Copeland scroll compressor, our 1.5 horsepower pump, and this pump draws off the tank. The tank's kind of elevated a little bit there, insulated. This pump draws off the tank, we got a nice shut off and pressure gauge here, and goes into the plate frame heat exchanger before it goes out to the uh, process. So when it does go out to the process, especially for a brewery, your pressure for the evaporator part is already satisfied and you can throttle down uh, accordingly for your brewery, brewery piping and so forth. Um, we're gonna go ahead and just turn the unit on. First thing that happens is you hear the pump turn on. And so this is a Ranco dual stage controller. The reason it's a dual stage controller is in addition to the set point control, uh, one of those two valves here is also hot gas bypass. Um, that's nice when you don't have a full load and you're getting down to set point, it will go into hot gas bypass mode, um, which is keeping your compressor on a little bit longer. It's creating like a false load. And that uh, is indeed what you want to do. The unit also has low ambient option, in this case achieved by this headmaster control here for the uh, flooded, back, uh, flooded back condenser, and that's our refrigerant receiver there. So what we're going to do is you press the, well the first thing that comes up on the screen after it stabilizes is what the fluid is set at right now, or what the fluid temperature is, and in this case that's 85. I'm going to press set. That's telling us that we're in Fahrenheit mode, okay? And then the next set point is 90. That's only because we're getting the temperature up. And we're going to lower that. We're going to lower that to 27 degrees. Then set. And the next one's the differential. We're going to keep the set point one at a three degree differential. Now that, and then we're in a cooling mode, cooling mode one. We keep that set at C1. The next set point is for the hot gas bypass. We want to set that at two degrees above your set point, your set point one. So we're going to bring that down to 29. set and I'm going to keep the differential for the hot gas at one degree set and for this second set point we're in cooling mode and I'll show cooling point two press set again and now we're back to the main screen that tells us what our fluid temperature is uh, so we're at 85 now and you can hear that uh, the compressor came on so you have the compressor one run light on the flow light is just indicating that we have flow it's a nice little unit because we already we could, a lot of chillers in this size range don't have a flow switch. Uh, this one does. We have that nice flow switch with the piping. And please notice we went ahead and insulated the piping as well as the uh, pump housing there. That was not insulated before. Uh, we're running right now about at the pump about 43 psi. And after we go through the evaporator, we're a little bit less than the, the 40. And notice here we got it throttled back just for our test uh, at about, about 18 GPM. 
give or take. And for a load, we have this air handler. So after I finish this first video, uh, we're going to turn the air handler on. For a little bit more load, we'll, we'll blow some hot air on it. Might not need that. Uh, but we're going to turn the air handler on for some load. And we're going to chill for a couple hours and come back. Um, come back showing you how frost is going to be built up and that we're meeting set points. That's probably what we'll do. I'll probably end this video in a minute and then come back in an hour or so after we stabilize at that uh, 20, 27 degrees. It's not going to take that long to chill it down to uh, that 27, but it's going to take longer than you want to sit and watch on the video. Um, but it'll take a while to form the frost. It's just nice to show the frost forming up kind of just adds some credibility to the fact that this is going to be a, uh, a brewery chiller. Um, we're going to stiffen this up for shipping uh, and make kind of a semi-crate around it. Um, one note, the uh, condenser, uh, if you take off this little side panel here, there's four screws holding the condenser on the shipping skid. And now, now that the fan's rotating, you kind of can't kind of can't see them that well. Um, so the customer can run this on this skid if they'd like, um, or um, set this up in remote fashion, put this, out, put this out in the roof. In which case, you'll have to cut these lines, uh, run some vacuum lines out there, add some new refrigerant, possibly put, some, uh, a, you know, put a vacuum on that, that line, those two lines that you would add to it. Uh, I'll come back to uh, video number two in a little while here. But before I end this one, let's just show that we're starting to chill, of course. Oh, by the way, um, we have a the standard high-pressure switch that the unit came with. Uh, for brewery operation, we went ahead, however, and we put in this uh, Johnson Controls new low-pressure switch that's adjustable uh, to just, just simply better for a low temp low temp application. So you can see we're already down to 74. We'll come back uh, in a while after we stabilize at the 27 degree uh, Fahrenheit set point. Thank you.